Hi, I'm Ben Bing, and I'm out here at the Idaho Fly Tying Expo, and uh, I'd like to tie you a, kind of a, a neat little pattern that um, it's more about uh, not looking beautiful in aesthetics, but it actually fishes really well and is highly visible on the water. It's a squalus stone, and I'm actually going to imitate the female squalus stone more importantly because the males don't return back to the water. It's the females, and one characteristic that they have is... I'm going to start off with, this is basically a nice dry fly hook, Daiichi hook, a 3X long hook. And I'm going to sit there as I always do when I'm tying, I make a nice thread base. This is just black thread. At this point of the fly, we're going to change over in a little bit. We'll talk about that as we go along. So one characteristic of the squala stones, when they come back to the water, they have a, a black egg sac. It's real distinctive in the back of the fly. And... Um, I just kindly take a nice little foam here and tie it in real good. See, just like that. And then work my way back so almost so it bends down on the bend of the hook a little bit right there. And then I'm going to secure that. If you secure that in like that real good, it won't go anywhere. And what I do is, is I'm going to bend this over just, just like that, like make a little bubble. And I'm kind of taking a soft loop at this point, a little tighter loop tighter loop and then tight tight and then kind of tie that down a little bit like that and we can just trim that off oh man so, uh, I like to practice um, re-threading so that's what I did right there come back down through here and uh, restart our little deal here so now I get that nice little it just makes a really nice little ball back there and that's the that's exactly how it looks when the, when they when they land back on the water and they're highly uh, accessible to the fish. A big nice meal. So they have two two nice distinctive um, tails kicking off into the back, and there's nothing better than good old bias that distinctly they're curved and they're already in the shape that we like. So I tie one on the far side here. And just kind of tie it all in, really kind of like this pull fly is a complete mess to tie from one end to another, but it does its job when it fishes. Okay, so then I got that side in right over there. And I'm going to come back on my side and tie it with the curve coming back towards me this way. And I just I don't even trim those off. All right, we're gonna make a pretty. They're a pretty bulky, meaty body, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how bulky, and big they are right here. Is this is this is a micro chenille in dark green olive color kind, of. and um, their bodies are are really distinctive. This there's gonna be a photo shown, and um, you can see more importantly that they're really dark kind of color, but they have a real a segment to them, and the segment. Is, is is real pronounced when you're looking underneath from the bug. It's a, truly a characteristic that you want to uh, install into the your fly. So I found this chenille. It's just, just wonderful stuff, and it doesn't get wet where it's going to uh, hamper and uh, sink the fly because we're going to take care of that with some CVC in a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to make a wide body, wide body to this guy. So I'm going to lay some chenille in here, and I'm making a foundation and I'm just kind of going back up against to where we started the tail with, with, with some chenille, as you can see it. So it's basically flattening out on the hook right there. I just tied that in on, the, on my side. Now on, on the other side here, I'm going to do the same thing. Tie that in. And that just gives the, 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 this fly a little bit of, it's making a wide body kind of, so I say. Trim that off. What I do is I just kind of push it with my thumbs and flatten everybody out. Now, I'm going to come in here from the bottom, almost to the side. There's almost like a notch in here where I've tied everything off and retie in that chenille. And I'm just going to come in here and just go like this. And you can also make this body out of foam. That is an option, and I've done that. So it's, the chenille is not, not to be all on this. All right. Now, I didn't quite get to this point, 
where I want to trim that off. I want to sit there and trap the fire, this, this section of chenille underneath it. So I've made me a little, like, a little collar area and then trim that off up there. That way, I got a little bit of area that I'm going to work forward in so I install a couple other materials. So right there, there's our body. You see the real distinctive ribs along here? Boom, 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 boom. That's very, that's very noticeable. We want that. That's probably the only main characteristic of this fly that counts to me is that body. So where we fish in the water, it's real clear water. Springtime, the fish like them. Okay, now I'm going to make a, a pronounced wing. My wings are done in three layers. I have this anti-static mat that you get when you buy electronics that's perfectly done color like a wing on mayflies, some certain mayflies, but more importantly on the stonefly. This is really cool stuff. I'm going to trim me off a section to work with. And um, if you know anybody that does computers and stuff, a lot of your hard drives and stuff come into it. And then what I want to do is, is that I want to trim this to the, the shape that I, that I want. And um, I'm, almost, I'm folding this over. like a kid who's gonna be carving a heart out of a construction paper. I trimmed it off at a little angle like that right there and then I'm gonna come in here and trim it off at an angle like that. And then what I've made here is, is that double wing that sits in the back of the stone fly. See that? But to tie this in, it's gonna be a big mess right in here. It's not gonna hold all that well. See how much of that material is down in there? So I'm going to very carefully come in and taper this down to a point right here. So now I have, it's looking like that right there. It looks like elongated heart is basically what I've made. See? All right, so then I can just check my length here and, and where I tie in, and it's, it's great. I want to just pass that egg sack and and right back past the bend of the hook. So that's all good. There's one more trick that I can do to this. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a Sharpie, a fine Sharpie, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically all I want to do is just put some distinctive lines in about the back half of it. This doesn't, you don't have to do this. It doesn't matter. This is only for us fly tires that want to really make it look cool. And that kind of gives it that veining look right there at the back end of it. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. And then you got a pretty natural looking wing right there. I'm going to set this up on top. And um, you, you really want some good... You kind of want to manipulate this and crease bend it a little bit. Put some nice tight wraps in here. Just like that. So that ties in there. At this point, it, this would be a great place to sit there and add a little extra strength to the fly. So I'm going to take a little bit of the head cement and soak it in there. Pretty good, pretty pretty good amount. Lock that wing in there. This is pretty pretty slippery stuff right here. So I'm gonna get that good locked in there. Now for for that's basically the bottom wing, and now we're gonna kind of do a mid wing. And it's not really a wing. What is more is is give it a little bit of life, get a little bit of flash. And uh, um, crystal flash is made in in this this root beer color, and it's really cool. And it's midge flash, and I like the smaller flash because I think per section of flash you get a lot more variance to light and reflection and something like that's really alive. Three or four strands right here just like this. It's going to come in behind, grab my thread, and see how it, I lay it right in. I don't even, don't even have any thread wraps at this point. I can position this right where I want it and then take a couple extra wraps fold over my other so it just kind of splays out along the back end of this and then I like it how it kicks out like that 
it's all over the place. This is what we want in this fly. These guys are real, real erratic. And then I, I like to trim this just like a little bit shorter than our first wing right there. That's it right there. And it just gives it a lot of the reflective light qualities to that. At this point, I'm going to whip finish off with the black thread. We're done with the black thread. And that'll all bind in with our glue that we added on there as well. We're going to start off, this is some Six Thought Danville, really bright orange, fluorescent orange thread. This is uh, not only going to be our thread for tying this fly, but I actually want this thread to show through in quite a quite abundance because the fly on the bottom, these flies are multicolored flies. We've got really dark olive in the back, yellow and black legs, and a distinctive head and body area that's, that's orange. So it's quite, quite complicated for such a small bug as this. So I'm going to start my thread. And actually kind of, I like to make a little ramp of thread in here and taper up to where we tie it off our body and, our, and put our wing in like that. Just like that. It's a good, good deal underneath there. And um, to make our antennae and, and our legs all in one shot, I'm just simply using round rubber and what I'll do is this, I'll set and it, this is two two pieces of rubber on each side so we'll have four total and I wrap it in and make it elongated so that this is going in front of the hook right here and then these guys are on the side of the fly they're parallel to the fly and these come out towards the back and then I'm going to do the same on this side. And I kind of use that same method where I just kind of grab the thread and let it lay up to where I want it like that. And then I can just take a couple lock and thread wraps and then get it to where I want it. And then go alongside. Like that. And uh, rubber is always kind of a pain to work with. So if anybody can invent a better way to tie it, I need to look into them and see how they do it. All right, cool. So I got my my rubber legs on each side of this, this is all good. Now I'm gonna take some CDC fibers and this is where you like the real premium CDC with the long fibers, this is where it's good. And the longer the better. So I'll pull out a whole clump like this and I'll pick through and I'm looking for the longer fibers like this, like the bigger ones like that, they're like almost an inch and a half. And I need three of them. There's the second one right there. And this one's actually, I like this one right here, see? And the more bulk in there, the better it is. And I'm going to take all these three, see how they're curved like this? And I'm going to lay one on top of each other. There has to be no science in this at all. And I'm going to clean off very little on the front here. I'm actually going to want to use the mass of this whole CDC wing to make this fly. And uh, it's a style that I tie in a caddis fly where I actually leave the head of the CDC out front and that actually makes that actually makes for our head as well, incorporated into the body. So this is going to be our wing that's going to go up on top right here like this. And I'll set that up in there. It's just a little shorter than the wing that we had before. And we'll come up through here and tie through like this in that whole little collar area. You see all this up top? I like to keep all these stems and everything up top there. And come back through here. Just once in a while, check your legs. Make sure they haven't gone anywhere on and you don't want. And then for, I know it looks like we've got a mess, but we'll kind of clean it up when we get there. And then this is, the legs are, are really, every little notch of the leg, you can distinctly see the yellow amongst the black. And just to kind of give that diffused look and a little balance in the fly, we're going to hackle it, and this is just some whiting European hackle, but it's dyed in this really bright yellow. Really like it a lot. Stands out really well. And I'm actually going to tie this in kind of wet style, where, where it's going to go go kind of kick into the back a little bit. You can do it as you way you want it, but to me it just uh, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to provide much flotation. The CDC is going to do that. And then the, we're going to just hackle in this whole collar area right here with a pretty decent amount of hackle 
about three or four turns. And that orange underneath there from the thread is really going to show through. And at this point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift everybody up, get my thread in front of that eye of that hook there. And it looks like we got a god, just a terrible mess. And we do. And I'm going to come in here and whip finish that off. Like that. And what that does is that kind of kicks all the CDC and these legs up a little bit going up there. So that'll kind of give it a little bit of distinction in the front. Notice I didn't cut off this till the end because if I do that, then everything comes undone. So it's always a good rule to trim that out. Now here's where you got to be a little careful. I got to make sure that I don't cut my legs off, but I cut off the front of this kind of a blunt fashion. So I kind of hold these guys out of the way. Come in here and and then I just made that real distinctive head up front on there. And that's what I'm looking for is a real underneath you can see. Now from the underneath of the fly, I'm going to trim out so that you're going to see that orange sticking through. Pretty distinctive from the hackle. And that will really come through. Trim up my, my back legs here. And at the same time, I can separate my... my legs and split them up and then the only two rubbers that really kind of came out crazy right here are these guys up front for the antennae so I'll trim these guys up split this over here and here and uh, this one is not not doing what I want as far as separating but that's as good as what we're going to get here so there we go so uh, if you can see from up here, it really has got a nice, I mean, the, this is the head area, and then we got the body area with the wings. But more importantly, on the bottom, we got all the ribs and, um, and a real distinctive figure of how this little, little uh, stonefly looks on the water. So there it is, and this is the CDC um, Squala Stone.